summer 2055. The world is at the brink of war. 112 ships from nine nations gathered in the South China Sea to protect Taiwan from the Chinese hegemony. With peace talks still underway in Tokyo the Chinese military launch a surprise attack on the Allied fleet. This would be known to history as, the spark, and would set into motion the largest and bloodiest war in human history. On the morning of August 8, China unleashes thousands of anti-ship missiles and attack drones on the dangerously clustered formation of Allied ships in the Taiwan Strait. The American civilian leadership had underestimated the Chinese capabilities, and anticipated no resistance. They ordered the Allied fleet to parade along the Chinese coastline in a tight formation to intimidate China. The Chinese military used this act of incompetence to maximum effect. No one expected it to come to war, the Americans most of all. Their leadership was certain that all we needed to do was show up with our big ships and sharp sticks and China would bugger off. That they wouldn't risk open war with the Allies, too costly they said. But after a few weeks of nothing, the Allied leadership, they got more cocky sailing closer to China in that ridiculous parade formation. It looked spectacular seeing all those ships lined up together like that, but it just made it a hell of a lot easier for the hegemony to take us out. When the attack came, it was early and I was on the deck. I didn't even see the first salvo of missiles. I heard it. It was louder than anything I've ever heard before. I turned to look and the Filipino frigate BRP Gregorio del Pilar was, was gone. Nothing but floating debris on the water. We did what we could, but the hegemony swarmed us with their drones, their planes, their missiles. Me and my mates were lucky to get out in one piece. Not many ships made it back to Australia that day. Within the first few hours of the attack, the Allied fleet had been reduced to one-third of its original fighting strength. Yet, the remaining ships continued to fight against a vastly superior enemy. By 1600 hours, the Allied commanders who still remained alive called for a full retreat. It proved to be too late. The Allied fleet attempted to flee from battle but they ran into a new fleet of enemy warships. The Communist Federated Republics, the new Soviet Union, had joined the war. On the side of the Chinese hegemony. The Allied fleet was surrounded and crushed by the combined navies of the Chinese hegemony and the CFR. The Allied sailors and marines who survived the slaughter, steeled themselves for the inevitable ground invasion of Taiwan. By the end of the day the hegemony and the CFR had landed 100,000 marines. That night was a long and bloody night for both sides as they fought for control of Taiwan. Crashing fire. He's coming. Stay, stay together. Run, run, run. By the third day the capital of Taiwan was taken by the hegemony and the surviving allied forces surrendered. The battle for Taiwan was over but the third world war had just begun. An estimated two million people died in those three days. A number that horrified the Allied nations, but as the war dragged on, one that they would soon get used to. We cannot allow even the most grievous of losses to change our strategy. Uh, we cannot uh, have a circumstance where uh, loss dictates how we will engage in this war and see our mission through. In my view, that wouldn't be appropriately honouring uh, the men we have lost. 
in my view, it would be letting our nation down. Uh, we went there for a purpose and we will see that purpose through.